Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. James Gill and today we're going to be looking at the ECG. Now, we've done a demonstration of the ECG before, but today we're going to look specifically about where we're placing the limb leads, but crucially why and how that enables us to view the heart in 12 different directions or 12 different views, which we see on the ECG. So what I mean by that is when you look on the ECG trace, um, we split up the ECG into its various regions, which allow us to identify inferior problems of the heart, septal problems of the heart, lateral issues with the heart. So with that in mind, let's begin our ECG. So my name is Dr. Gill, and I've been asked to do an ECG of yourself today. Before we start, could please confirm your name and date of birth? Mickey Mouse, second, 22nd of March, 1997. Super. So before we go any further, could we just check, do you have any problems with your heart? No. Thank you. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to input that information into the ECG. Uh, but as well as that, I need your height, if you know it. 178 centimetres. Perfect. And your weight? 65 kilograms. Superb. Oh, and your age was? Uh, 24. Super. Right. Once we've imported the information, we need to make sure that we're gelling our hands. And if you could please take off your shirt and lie back on the bed. It's quite important when you're doing the ECG that you've got uh, the machine on a trolley with wheels to it so you can bring it closer to the patient if you find that your leads aren't quite reaching long enough. So we're going to start off with our limb leads. So we're going to move our chest leads across the patient to start off with. We're going to move our um, leg leads down uh, towards the, uh, the bottom of the patient. And we're going to bring our arm leads to the top. So let's just move those over there. Different ECGs will have slightly different electrodes. These um, electrodes, you need to apply a slight extension to each before you apply them to the patient. Because it's a button uh, end to it, if you were to apply this afterwards, it would be quite uncomfortable for the patient. So with your ECG uh, uh, electrodes placed, we need to apply them to the patient. So in terms of our first uh, leads, we're going to place uh, on the arms, so we want to make sure that they're away from any bony, bony prominences and that we're applying them directly over the skin without any um, crossovers of the arms and legs. In terms of going down on the legs, we're going to apply them over the inside of the ankle. However, uh, they're not absolute uh, in terms of the positioning. And what I mean by that is as long as your ECG leads are on the limbs and not over bony prominences, that is acceptable. You'll see certain ECGs, for example, when we're doing a... Um, an exercise ECG will place the leads of the shoulders and over the mid thighs. This is order, in order to reduce the risk of them coming off whilst the patient is running on the treadmill. In terms of the six uh, uh, chest leads, the precordial leads, we need to find the manubrial sternal angle. This is associated with the second intercostal space directly below it. We then need to find the third and the fourth on the right side of the sternal border. This is where we're going to place the first uh, electrode and we're going to make sure that if we've got circular ones like this, that the uh, electroconductive um, material is going vertically. We're then going to do the same again, manumal sterile angle, to the second intercostal space, third intercostal space, fourth intercostal space, to place the second uh, electrode. We're then going to jump to the fourth electrode, and that's going in the mid-cavicular line in the fifth intercostal space. Now, the reason why we've taken the fourth uh, electrode at that point is because the third electrode will go again in the fifth uh, intercostal space, but between the second and the fourth electrode. We're going to do similar again and take the sixth electrode and place it in the mid axillary line on the fifth intercostal space. And finally, we're going to go back to V5, going between the sixth and the fourth um, lead, again, in the fifth intercostal space. This will then allow us to attach our um, wiring 
to our precordial electrodes in order to get a horizontal or transverse view of the heart. With our um, electrodes in place, we then want to attach the leads. And thankfully, these are color coded when it comes to the limb leads. So we're going to put red to the right arm, yellow to the left arm, green to the left leg, and black to the right leg using the nice and simple uh, phrase or mnemonic, ride your green bike. And these will be applied in a clockwise fashion. So in terms of the limb leads, as I said, we're going to go for red first for ride, then yellow for your, then green on the left leg. We're going to have our black lead. That's going to go to the uh, right leg. We then want to apply our chest leads, which are color coded, but are also uh, numbered. So we're going to start off with our obviously V1. Then we have V2. V3. V4. V5. And V6. So this should hopefully give us a working ECG. Let's have a look here. So with our leads attached, we're confirming that we've got a good trace going through. And we're making sure that we're happy with the speed here set at 25 millimeters per second. Once we can see we've got a good trace and nothing here looks untoward, by that, that I mean any evidence that we've got leads the wrong way around, then we're going to hit start to record. So we're going to get 10 seconds of recording of the ECG. And then we're going to um, look at the file to make sure that there's no issues here. So again, we're confirming we've got 52 beats a minute. There's no obvious abnormalities here. Now we can see if the automated system has given us a diagnosis. Here we've got normal sinus rhythm and a normal ECG. And I would actually agree with that. However, it's always best to make sure you interpret these yourself because the machine can be slightly problematic. Once we've unwired the patient, we can allow the patient to remove their electrodes themselves. However, we're making sure that we're keeping hold of the attachments and binning in medical waste uh, the actual uh, attachment to the chest. So if you'd be kind enough to take off the electrodes. And obviously, once we've completed their examination, we need to thank the patient and make sure that we return their shirt to them. So thank you for that. Any questions to myself after that? No, thank Super. you. Super. Well, thank you very much for your time. Well, I hope that overview of the ECG was useful for you, so you now understand where it is you're placing the leads and why some of those uh, lead placements are important, such as avoiding any bony prominences, but conversely, why there are variations between um, different um, disciplines. For example, with sports medicine, as said, applying uh, leads to the thighs and the shoulders may be done to improve uh, the um, signals coming through, as opposed to if they're on the very edges of the limbs, which we might do with a supine patient. Well, if we try to get the patient to run like that, we're going to get a very uh, disrupted signal. So if you've got any questions about performance of the ECG, please drop them down below. And then we're going to have a further video to follow up on this, exploring the limb leads, what they are, and how they're important with regards to the regions of the ECG. And hopefully you'll join us for that video uh, as we all progress through our knowledge of the ECG together. With that in mind, take care. We'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.